All right, guys, we are now uh, talking to our pal, Ben Goodall, down in uh, Australia. Ben, welcome back to the Laidback Bike Report. Good morning, Gary. How are you? <laughs> Good. So, uh, Ben, uh, you are the uh, owner and creator at uh, TriSled. I wanted to concentrate on... Uh, giving us an update on TriSled and uh, the new Rotovelo version that you're working on. So let's start with uh, with the situation down in Australia right now. Well, you know, it's just like the rest of the world. We're going in and out of lockdowns and having arguments about vaccinations and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, I would describe it as a little bit like musical chairs here in uh, Victoria. Where we're going to about our fifth or sixth lockdown. So when your music stops, everyone jumps on a chair um, and just sits around and waits for things to get going again. So... It's a little bit stop-start, which means, um, yeah, we're still working here. We're still innovating. We're still building bikes for people, still doing customs, still doing green speed and um, obviously working on Road of Velo. But there's, there's uh, it's, it's a lot of time you just have a little bit of a stop and you just don't make a deadline and then you get going again and you try to catch up. Um, but, you know, we're just trying to stay positive like everybody else and, and keep moving. Has it affected your business in a, ser in a serious way? Problems with components being available and supplies. Tell us how that's uh, going with you guys. Uh, my impression is probably, unfortunately, the worst is probably yet to come for us on that. We weathered through 2020 pretty well. Uh, amazingly, actually, because our racing market came to almost a ground halt, and that was you know, well over half of our work. Um, building uh, racing human powered vehicles for the Australian racing HPV scene. Uh, but uh, th we pivoted across to doing a lot of um, special needs work and, uh, and custom work like we're able to do, and also made a relationship with the Greenspeed guys. And it really resulted in 2020 just being a massive pivot year and changing to a different market. And, um, and it was not business as usual, but it was sort of business of the same intensity. Uh, this year could be a little bit more challenging, I think. We're still stop starting. We have had a couple of races, but we've just had to cancel a couple of races due to some current outbreaks here in Australia. Uh, and obviously supply difficulties with um, with trikes made, made in Asia at the moment is becoming uh, a, a bigger problem and um, we're just not able to sort of really get our retail shop really moving it at all. Uh, so we just do what we do. We go out in the workshop and we custom build stuff with whatever's lying around, I guess. <laughs> yeah, look, that's one of the about TriSled is because we are sort of a little bit more diverse than a lot of the builders. We have our own completely our own in-shop uh, facilities and and you know composites as well as frame building as well as assembly and engineering. We can we can pivot a little faster than a lot of people, but we obviously can't do in bigger numbers as a lot of people either. So you know this this can go to suit us in some in some senses and um, obviously really hurt us in others. Um, as I'm sure it is for everybody else, we've all got our strengths and weaknesses, and when. When the plan changes, your weaknesses come out a little more, don't they? So, yeah, you've got to just got to power on and adapt. Could you just uh, briefly describe the Rotovelo for those who don't know uh, about it and tell us uh, why you decided to take the next step in terms of updating it? Yeah, look, Rotovelo is going on, I think, our 10th year of production this year. So um, it's starting to develop a bit of a heritage, which we're very proud of. Uh, it's a unique Velmobile uh, in as far as its construction methods are like no other. It features a chromoly chassis like a conventional recumbent trike would uh, for a very distinct reason in that it uses a roto rotational molded rotational molded polyethylene uh, shell, which is similar to the way a kayak is made or a water tank in some countries. And uh, the genius of this idea was centered around the idea of a durable Velmobile that you could use in busy city streets and busy urban environments, as well as touring. So that's Run Velo in a nutshell. And uh, after 10 years of, um, of, of building it in much the same way with minor updates, we're now in a position to really take things to the, to the next level and, um, and address a lot of, a lot of uh, feedback we've had from our current users. Let's talk about the new version. If you can, can you describe what changes have been made uh, on, with the new version? Yeah, look, probably plaguing Rota Valley's existence the whole way through has been it, it doesn't have suspension in its original version. And we've, we've copped a lot of, um, a lot of uh, I guess, a lot of flack about that and why it doesn't have suspension. Um, now, it doesn't have suspension in the original version for a very distinct reason that in our testing, we confirmed that when the vehicle weighs more than about 35 kilos, uh, it doesn't really earn its keep aerodynamically and doesn't really make for a good Valmobile. It's, it's kind of the worst of both worlds. Now, the durable construction methods of Rotovelo in the past meant that we just didn't have the weight window for suspension. 
An exciting development happened around about this time last year in working with our moulders in that uh, we managed to improve our moulding methods and, um, and set up our tool a little better. And we were able to get a massive four and a half kilos of material out of the shell weight. So that gave us four and a half kilos to play with it to basically start uh, having a look at the customer feedback and ways that we can improve the product. We, we've changed the steering geometry. Uh, we've now added four degrees of, car, of camber and a little more cast up. And that does two things. It gets the wheels tied up in the arches a little bit more so that it reduces water spray. It also grabs a little bit more stance in the vehicle and um, more, I guess, more exciting and more, uh, more, uh, more lively handling. Uh, to do that, we've then in turn moved to an indirect steering method instead of a direct steering method featuring a central handlebar. This slows down the steering back a bit so that it's not too lively and has a nice feel in your hands. And uh, one of the customer feedback things we had from um, many Valmobiles, not, not just our own, was the need for uh, real handlebars, full-size grips and full-size brake levers and things that can just really hold your hands and make you feel like you're in control of the vehicle. So in the new Rotovelo, we're featuring an above-seat steer full handlebar with full-size brake levers, full-size gear levers and um, nice big plush grips to hang on to. Uh, just so that when you are descending or you're moving a little bit faster than you normally would be comfortable with, you feel like you've got, got the vehicle you know, in your hands and in control. Suspension-wise, we have uh, moved into a, a rear swing arm uh, with an air shock, uh, which is tunable, and uh, urethane uh, front suspension, so that we have, uh, we have more rear suspension uh, than we do front and stiffer front and softer rear. Now, this means that we can control the roll rate of the vehicle so that it's not too... Uh, body roll around the corners and still has the nice plush handling that Rotovelo has been known for, uh, but obviously soaks up the bumps nicely uh, with the uh, with the, with the big travel in the rear suspension. So we've also done some work in, on the interior. Rotovelo's one of one of many unique features of Rotovelo is that its seat is moulded as part of the shell, so that it's all watertight in there. Uh, the pro of that is obviously that it's watertight and the cargo space and, and the body space all sort of intertwined and there's no chance of anything going anywhere or getting dirty from outside um, uh, water or whatever. The, the negative of that is the seat is in the one place and we had to make a choice on where that seat was when we made the first Rotovelo and it went to suit the vast majority of people. We did pretty well. However, 10 years on, we've been able to survey and get feedback from our clients and we've realised that we needed just a fraction more shoulder space. So we've adapted the mould to have just a little bit more shoulder space, the shoulder sit a fraction lower in the shell, uh, which gives uh, taller riders a bit more space um, and smaller riders a bit more aero because your head sits a bit lower in the, in the machine. Uh, also a safety benefit there in that the roll, uh, the roll um, uh, bar actually sort of takes on more of the load if you uh, do manage to have an incident. So the seat also now has some, um, with the extra space, we can use uh, three layer venter seat, cells, uh, seat, seat pads instead of um, uh, the two layer. And we can also even put in lumbar supports and so on. Probably back, I will go back to the shell for a moment and talk about that uh, in, as far as that now that we're molding it in a, a more advanced fashion and we have more control over it, we now also have the option to mold the shell in polypropylene as well as polyethylene. So uh, in, our, in our releases, we're actually going to offer both alternatives. The, um, the vehicle featured in the, in the photographs that I've sent through uh, is a polypropylene shell, which is in turn painted. And that enables you to have obviously the nice automotive finishes and, um, and obviously any colour you want, which is obviously something people really like. Uh, it, however, the polypropylene shell is stiffer and more presentable, but not as durable as the polyethylene shell, uh, which is the original premise of the, um, of the Rotovelo. So the standard polyethylene shell will remain and we'll actually gauge customer feedback on which people like better. Uh, painted polypropylene shells will obviously be a price premium. Uh, polyethylene shells come in only a handful of colours but are more durable. So pros and cons both there. We're going to let the customers decide on that. All right, Ben. So I guess uh, finishing up here, I'd like to know uh, about uh, when uh, these new uh, versions of the Rotovelo will be available? Well, when we set out to do this, we said it was going to be ready for springtime, uh, but uh, I didn't say which springtime date. So, uh, you know, so that, that means that I'm still on time, technically. <laughs> Just two years were behind where we wanted to be, like a lot of manufacturers right now. Yeah, but we, um, we're about to open the pre-order process for Rotovelo 2. The way it works is if you want to order a Rotovelo 1, you still can. 
And I should also point out that the Rotovelo 1 is the lightest Rotovelo. It's now a sub 30 kilo. So there is advantages of ordering the old model as well as uh, a six to eight week turnaround time if you order it. Uh, or you can go in pre-order for the Rotovelo 2 now and uh, place your interest and deposit down. Uh, we're aiming to wind up with our, uh, our production prototype work probably, as I said, in the springtime for deliveries, sort of in the September, October there, we would like to actually start taking on our first batches. I guess we need to make sure our audience is clear on the fact that in that this is the middle of winter in Australia. And when you say springtime, that will be coming up in our fall here in the Northern Hemisphere. So did you say that the Rotovelo 1 is lighter than the Rotovelo 2? It is now. So we saved around four and a half, five kilograms. We can, we can divvy that out two ways. We can build the Rotovelo the way we used to and still and take advantage of that weight saving. Or we can add in these new features like we're, we're proposing for Rotovelo 2. Really just adhering to our original design premise of not exceeding 35 kilo, basically. So we're staying at the 35 kilo, but packing in some of the features people have wanted. Uh, but I personally may actually stay in a Rotovelo 1 with a new shell because I love the climbing. It, it, it's around about, I think it's around 29 kilo mine at the moment. And uh, I mean, that's the same as any composite Velma bill out there nowadays in a, in a durable polyethylene shelled machine. So, so I love I love the fact that I can roll down a fire road or something, or I can live outside it or, or, or do those little errands in it. I like the freedom of Rotovelo, and I'm now obviously starting to get some of that performance. Still determine the final weight of Rotovelo too. We're still finalising uh, the, the the photos I've sent you are actually our preliminary prototype. And when I say preliminary prototype, we're out to seven prototypes on Rotovelo two over the last five years, and all of the previous prototypes have not really offered anything that the original vehicle uh, didn't already have, so we're scrapped. Uh, this one is the first time we've built one where we feel it's a sizable improvement. Uh, from this, we are now actually developing our prototype, signing out some of the production duties to make it to act producer as the original Rotovelo. So once we've, we've done all that, we'll know the final weight. But our, uh, our current prototype is definitely in the ballpark, so it's great. All right, Ben, some great information there about the Rotovelo. So... How can folks find out more information about the Rotovelo? Where can they find you? First of all, if you are interested in the Rotovelo 2, register your interest by dropping us an email, which is just info at chrysler.com.au. Uh, we hope to put some info on our website soon, and I also hope to um, put a, a pre-order video on our YouTube channel in the next um, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, but I also should point out that my YouTube channel is actually where you'll find out most of the things about what's going on at Chrysler. All of our custom work produced goes on and our prototype work, we often just do short grabs and what's going on there. So uh, get into the YouTube channel, have a look around if you want to stay, stay in, uh, in the loop with this. Uh, and obviously when we have uh, things on the website, we'll put them up. All right, then we're going to say goodbye at this point. We will have all the links in the uh, in the description below to everything with uh, TriSled, the YouTube channel and the website and the email as well. Ben Goodall, thank you so much for taking the time to bring us up to date on everything with the Rotovelo and with TriSled. It's great seeing you again, pal. Thanks for your interest, Gary. I really appreciate it.